Hello everybody, my name is Robert Langenfeld. I am creating this video today as an informational video for those who are currently making the migration to Dorco. As you know, uh, recently Finale announced the end of life of its product, and um, there's a lot of people who are now switching over from Finale over to Dorco, um, and there's even some who are switching over to Sibelius as well. But today I'm talking, mainly focusing on one important workflow that I know that me and several other composers use, um, mainly Stephen Bryan and Alex Shapiro off the top of my head, about the DAW editor. So um, I'm going to talk about some of the pros and cons that I've experienced in trying to replicate my DAW editing flow in Digital Performer um, inside of the play functionality of um, Digital Performer. Not Digital Performer, but of Dorco. So um, let's kind of dive into it. So why make this switch potentially? Well, for those who don't have time to watch the video, I haven't. Um, there's a lot of pros and cons to this editor. Some are great, some are not so great. So we are going to go through some of those and we will dive into it. So the first thing is the reason why I would consider this. So here's a side by side. I run a two monitor setup on my composing station and one of the in Dorco version 3 or 4, they introduced play mode. And play mode was this great uh, way of people to take their compositions and actually go in there and have like a nice DAW where they could, you know, tweak the playback settings, really control like velocity curves, um, you know, note durations, like things that, you know, make it sound as realistic as they want without affecting the notation. One of the subsequent benefits of it was that it would allow them to then essentially edit notes in the DAW. When I saw this feature came out, I tested some things back and forth, and initially I was able to kind of get this set up where I could have the notation up on one screen, I could have the DAW up on the other screen, and I almost jumped ship completely because uh, Dorco also allows me to self-import in um, other um, electronics, in other MIDI or like um, VST instruments um, that I use for my composition process. However, in the most recent version of Dorco, this kind of got broken where if I were to start editing a note over here on this side of the screen, it would flip this side of the screen over back into its uh, right mode and it would not preserve play mode. I have sent an email off to them asking them if we could add this functionality back in a future version. Um, have not heard back from them yet, but maybe I'll follow up on it someday. So, why am I using Digital Performer for my MIDI editor and Creative Suite. Well, its MIDI editor is probably one of the best I've ever used. Um, I've tested a couple. I've tested Cubase. Uh, primarily, I've tested um, whatever the Apple one is, uh, Logic. And uh, Digital Performer for me has just been the best. Um, the ability, they've added some really awesome new features over the last couple of years. Um, one of them being now uh, with the key switch support where I no longer have to create an extraneous note like here, way down here um, in the MIDI data flow to change patches where I can go from like my Mercado short double tonguing up to my sustain playing has been really, really nice for MIDI flow. I can even now assign accents to these um, in the accent mapping and the key mapping so that when I export these out as MIDI, uh, the MIDI data will say like, hey, add Mercados to this and then, you know, don't add accents to this. So in my old flow, I used to have two tracks or multiple tracks, you know, one for each accent. Um, and then I would have to merge those and do a bunch of like cleanup and editing. And now it's just in one nice, neat place. Really cool. So um, it also allows me to see like an overview. So uh, right now I've got my horns selected, but let's say I want to see in context of all the brass. So now I can just expand this out here a little bit so that you can see this all better. Um, so now I can see all my brass information uh, or if I want to see all my wood ones with it. I can see kind of like an idea of what my wood ones are doing. Um, I know exactly, you know, I'm, I'm on the horn section. So if I wanted to go ahead and just, you know, draw on some like horn data here, I know that it's going on the horn track. Um, and it's very clear and la clear labeled scene over here. Um, and same goes with, you know, my percussion. I can see all of my MIDI data. It just, it gives me a really nice, you know, comprehensive like top down of everything that I'm currently working through right now. Um, which has been really helpful and especially for copy paste flows. So, uh, my flow is, you know, editing, creating MIDI. Um, and this is 
in really important context because we're going to talk about Digital Performer here in a second. So as you can see here, I've got all four notes in one place and I can easily stretch them. And then let me show another example here. Um, let's say I have multiple brass tracks here. Um, let's say I don't like this two measures uh, phrase. Let's say I want to extend this out. I can. I can easily extend that out across all the tracks. I'm not going to because this piece is kind of locked in. Now let's look at an example of this flow where, you know, maybe, hey, I want to extend out all of these tracks here in a MIDI channel over in Dorico. So um, let me go ahead and just delete all this first of all. So I'm going to go into write mode. I'm just going to delete all this for right now um, just so we can kind of start fresh. Um, let's say I am editing in Dorico. Let's say I'm starting at the very beginning. Let's, you know, make a C major chord here. Um, I can easily select all these and I can, you know, course drag like this. But my problem is, what if I wanted to do this across multiple tracks? Well, first of all, let's fix this here. Um, I have to copy and paste. I can't drag track information around up here like I do in Digital Performer. Let me show an example. So, once again, just using this piece as a test example. Um, let's go over here where I've got miscellaneous mini data that I don't want duplicated. Let's say I've got this symphony part here and I want to duplicate it in the tuba really easily. All I have to do is I have to just hold Alt on Windows, drag it up, and it's in my tuba part, exact same octave and everything. In Dorico, I have to go in, select all the notes that I want, go down to the track, press paste. Um, so that's, I can't Alt drag. So that is kind of a, you know, interruption in my flow. So that, that's one example. Now I've got two things in here. I've got this bassoon doing the C chord and I've got the flute doing the C chord. I can't see both of them at the same time. Whereas in Digital Performer, I can once again, I can see everything in here that I've got, you know, selected and I can easily drag across multiple tracks and extend or shorn lengths and whatnot. Um, very, very, very easily without thinking about it. So let's say, let's use this for example, let's say this tuba and let's put on the timpani as well in here. Um, as you can see up here, these are both changing when I drag them because I've got them both selected um, because I can select multiple tracks and I can have them in my MIDI editor and in my track editor at the same time. You can't do that really in Dorico. So that's kind of a down, one of the major downsides to this is that it kind of slows down my flow because I have to constantly be switching between tracks um, and it just doesn't really intuitively work for me. Um, I can kind of sort of draw playing techniques in here. Um, so let me show an example of that. Um, let's go over to the right mode. and um, So let's say I add a crescendo. So I have to initially have the dynamics kind of pre-drawn in here. Um, so let's just add a crescendo to that. And let's add a crescendo to that. Uh, they have to pre-exist in here before I can come in here and do any kind of like manipulation. Um, at least I found. Um, so that's that's kind of one of the downsides to that. Another thing is like, you know, you, you can draw all these, but I have found the playback has not been as good um, in terms of like what I'm able to accomplish in a DAW versus what I'm able to accomplish in Dorco. It's a little bit annoying to have to constantly adjust these. So because what will happen, let's say I come in here into uh, right mode. Um, I can't just, you know, I, I've kind of got in my head. I know that like, uh, CC, I think it's like 27 is like mezzo piano for me. Uh, CC 45 is like mezzo forte. Um, CC 111 is like fortissimo. Um, and all those things for me are just kind of like, you know, 
pre-programmed um, in my brain for digital performer. Um, but what's nice with Dorco is that I can just come back into the editor here. Um, if I can get that open on the right screen. Um, and then, you know, I can just slap on, uh, let me get back in right mode, Mezzo Forte. Um, and if we go in the play mode, as you can see, it kind of overwrit it. So it's a little annoying. Um, I'm not even entirely sure I'm doing some of these flows correctly. Um, but it's enough for me to know that I do not want to continue trying to, um, write raw MIDI from scratch in, uh, Dorco, I would rather honestly currently stick with digital performer. If they add the following, if they add the ability where I could say, let's just add a note here, let's just say an A3. And then I come down into the, uh, CC channel data and add my crescendo. Um, let me go ahead and actually put that in like the right parts is a little more realistic. Um, if they were to add the ability where this somehow translates in here to becoming a crescendo, um, I would immediately drop. So like, well, I wouldn't immediately, but like that would be a big motivator for me to kind of make the switch over. Um, having the dual screen again would be another big add. And then on top of that, um, having better key switching abilities currently in Dorco are, are kind of non-existent. Like they are not nearly as good um, from the MIDI editor flow um, because I can't edit this. Like this is where the playing technique is at. I, I can't edit this. So like, let me say if I try to add an automation here, um, there's, there's not really an ability for me to add any kind of key switching for the playing technique. So like the only way that I can change the playing technique is if, let's say, uh, let's add a couple more notes in here. Um, have to go back to my right mode, of course, and then let's just add a accent in there. Let's add a, um, what would be a fun accent to add here? That would kind of show off. Um, let's add a staccato. And let's go back to play mode. Um, I don't really see that this is accented. It shows me my technique is uh, accented. It shows me my technique here is natural, but it doesn't let me change that in here. I, I don't want to have to keep flipping back and forth is what I'm getting at. Um, I'd rather just honestly stick in here um, and keep this you know, kind of like what we did with my, uh, let me open up the horn part here, where I've got the ability to just, you know, have my key mapping already kind of set out. I can easily, you know, let's say I write a note like this and I want it to be sus accent. I can just drop it down real quick. It doesn't get imported in my MIDI data. It's just cleaner. So uh, that is my ramble on uh, Digital Performer versus Dorco in terms of like MIDI editing flows. Um, I, for now, will be sticking with uh, continuing to write in Digital Performer um, and then engraving in Dorco. Uh, I will say the Dorco import, MIDI import process is absolutely fantastic. I love what they've done with it, their ability to create and assign players. I have a pretty standard template now that I can use to import into my concert band template. Um, and add staffs on the fly. Um, I can, if I do happen to, let's say, continue to use um, for example, I still haven't set up key switches for my woodwinds yet, just because I haven't <laughs> had the time yet. I can still merge these all into one track during the MIDI import process and assign the correct um, accents. And overall, it, it's just incrementally sped up my flows so much over the last couple of years that um, I see them both as complementing each other. I don't see it as one versus the other. I see it as, at least for my flow and those who use Digital Performer as a MIDI editor, as a very complimentary flow that, and maybe one day, um, they will get more advanced MIDI feature, MIDI editing features into digital performer, uh, not digital performer, but Dorco. Um, but I think for now they want to keep a lot of that in Cubase. Uh, I haven't touched Cubase in over a decade yet, so I'm not sure how much has advanced since then, but yeah. Um, if you made it this far in this video, thank you for watching so much. Um, I hope this was really, really helpful and. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free, feel free to reach out to me. 
um, through my website or through my email. Have a great day.